Hey everyone, it's Molly from The Feed Feed and today we are in our test kitchen and we're gonna be making a tomato and basil farro risotto with our friends at Tutoroso. So obviously traditionally a risotto would be made with rice but we're gonna be using farro today which is a nice whole grain, it's an ancient grain, it is super nutty, has a lot of flavor and texture um, and fiber. So it's like the perfect thing for a weeknight dinner. Uh, we have a little bit of chicken stock, which we're actually gonna blend up with our Tutoroso San Marzano style tomatoes. We have some fresh basil. We're gonna use a little bit of Tutoroso tomato paste to really boost that tomato flavor. We have a little bit of shallot, some red pepper flakes for heat, some fresh garlic, some butter. And then we're gonna finish the dish off with a little bit of creamy mascarpone cheese and then some Parmesan. So the first thing we're gonna do is cook our farro. So if you've never made it before, it's a lot like pasta. So I just have some boiling water here that I've salted heavily. And you're gonna just toss it in the boiling water and it'll cook for about 25 to 30 minutes. You just want it to be tender. It's definitely still gonna have a bite, but it'll have sort of like that al dente quality. Um, and then you just drain this just like traditional pasta. So to build the base of our uh, risotto, we are going to just start with a shallot and some garlic. So I'm just gonna mince these both up and we're just gonna mince this little garlic clove before we saute it in a little bit of butter and olive oil. A little bit of red pepper, some black pepper, and some sea salt. I am going to just blend our tomatoes up with a little bit of chicken stock to sort of make the base of our risotto. So I love using these Tutoroso um, San Marzano peeled pear style tomatoes because they have like a really nice sweetness, they're low in acid, and when we puree them, they're really just going to help intensify the creaminess of our risotto. These tomatoes are picked at their peak of ripeness and they're preserved using just steam. So what you're getting in the can is pretty much as close to fresh from the field as you can get. Plus, they're packaged in non-BPA line cans using non-GMO ingredients, so it's really a win-win. And then we're just gonna add this to a saucepan and bring it to a nice gentle simmer because we want it nice and warm as we add it to our risotto while we're cooking. Okay, so I just drained our farro and you can see that it's kind of plumped up a little bit and at this stage, like. We want to be able to eat it. It's not really going to soften further. And I'm just tossing this so that each grain is sort of coated with that butter. All right, next thing we're going to do is just add our tomato paste in. This is again just going to like amp up that tomato flavor. Okay, so our tomato paste has been cooking for about two minutes and it's sort of starting to brown on the bottom of the pan. So just going to add a little bit of white wine and deglaze that and let that cook off for about one minute. And now for the fun part, we're gonna just start to ladle in this tomato mixture about a cup at a time. And we're going to stir. Now, the key difference here between a farro risotto and a traditional risotto with rice is like, this is fairly low maintenance. You don't need to stand here all day stirring. You can kind of add the liquid, give it a stir to combine and go about your business. You don't have to be sort of tied to the pot. And then as soon as you see that the liquid has sort of all been absorbed, you can add a little bit more. And you're going to repeat this process until all the tomato mixture is gone. Um, and this has cooked for about 15 minutes. Okay, so our farro risotto is almost done. I'm just going to quickly chiffonade some basil. So this is looking great. This is just the consistency you're going for. I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna add our cheese. So this is mascarpone. Oh my God, look at this. So good. Okay. Just gonna add a little bit more cheese because why not? Okay, let's try this. Mmm, it's so good. It almost tastes like a 
like a mac and cheese. Like it has like a really nice rich cheese flavor, but you get that sort of like sweetness from the tomatoes. It's so, so good. It's so easy. I hope you all make it. You can get the full recipe on thefeedfeed.com. And thanks again to Tutoroso.